What's up guys, Dark Deli here, playing American Truck Simulator, and today I want to do a very thorough review of the Mac R. I believe it's the Mac R 600. I haven't quite done enough research on it yet. Now what I have here, okay, so first of all, this truck is not available in the uh, base game of American Truck Simulator. You can get this from a mod. It's a mod available easily on the Steam Workshop. You can download it. I've modified it quite a bit. Here's what, here's what I want to do today, guys. I want to go over the modifications I put in mind, the modifications that are available, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive a couple thousand miles, put a few thousand miles on it, and give you a good overall feel of how it drives. For instance, the last truck, which was also a Mac, it was a Mac B series that I drove. After the drive, I wasn't quite so impressed with it. Today, we're going to have a look at the Mac R. Now, this is also an older school truck. Now, as you can see, I've outfitted it with all the high-tech, like, accoutrement here. Don't worry, we'll fire it up here and all that kind of stuff in a second. Now, some people who like the look of an old-school truck will love this truck. Now, me, I like a little mix of both. I like some of the old-school stuff. I like to have also, like, right there, you can see my speed and my cruise are illustrated very clearly. There, you can see my GPS map very clearly. I'll show you all these options. Let's have a look from the outside. Let's also have a listen to the engine Let's definitely have a listen to the engine. Let's have a look outside. So here's the truck running. Um, I'm gonna turn the sound up a bit and just go through the sounds for you. All right, so you can hear, I do think this sounds pretty good. We'll also hear audible. Let's go ahead and back up here. We'll also hear audible engine brake. This is something I noticed in a recent truck I tested, which I'll have soon. Some of the engine brakes don't sound quite as, I don't know, we Americans, we like big loud engines. And that's definitely something here. Let's see if we can get some speed here. The truck looks nice, yeah, here we go. Okay, couldn't quite, okay. Anyway, all right, so we've seen the truck kind of run the basic such. Now, there's a lot of options you can do with this truck. Unlike the last truck I reviewed, there's a lot of options you could do with this. A lot of, I did add quite a bit of lights here, a little bit of green and blue, which should look cool at night. You don't have to add all these, but you have the option to. And then headlights, and then let's hit on my brights. My brights, you know, so I'll also have kind of these rally lights down below. Yeah, God save the person who pulls in front of me at night with my brights on because they already got blinded. Um, and then we have the beacons. Hey, you can set this stuff up however you want. All right, so let's have a look at more of the inside of the truck. And let's uh, first, let's start with what you can do. Oh, okay. First, guys, before we go to modify it, we're kind of still setting up this new little format here for reviewing trucks so let's go ahead and look inside in the truck all right so first of all controls that work pretty much all of them as far as i know if we look down here we should be able to see the parking brake come on yep notice i did not hear i did not hit the trailer brake just the regular parking brake i don't have a trailer on me but i'm assuming that knob works now here's one great thing about this truck i love if you look, right, you see I'm still zoomed in. See the switch on the far left? I'm sorry. <laughs> the switch on the far right, that's my bad. The engine brake seat, flick off, flick on, flick off, flick on. There are some trucks that don't have an engine brake indicator and that really annoys me because it's kind of something I like to know if I have on. Some of the trucks, it's also very quiet and you really can't tell. This truck has a very audible, normal American V8 engine brake. Trust me, you'll know when it kicks on. Over here, these center three switches are the lights. Right now we have no lights on. If I flick just my running lights on, you see that knob, okay, right there, you see that knob and that toggle switch hit, and then here's my headlights, and you see that flick. You can see these, and I, I really like the way this is animated. Next, my brights, is, do I have a, I don't think there's a brights, oh, there is a bright indicator right there on my, the bottom of my speedometer. We have a bright indicator, but you can always clearly tell. Just by looking at this, again, I can see my lights are on, Let's turn them off. Now we have no lights on. You can tell my parking brake is on. I can turn that off. I like to go through this stuff because a lot of trucks, this kind of stuff is important. It's very important to know what's on, what's not. Now this does not have an engine brake indicator on the information panel, which I have mounted here. The reason I, I, I have mounted this here, not everyone runs this. I mounted this up here. 
it's right above the map panel. So when I see my, I can look at my speed limit, I can look up here and see what speed I'm running and everything very easily, very easily. You can see I also have many items here downloaded from Sizzle's Mega Pack. It's a separate mod that gives me, okay, this, this only has a day cab, so I don't have the sleeper back there, but the Sizzle's Mega Pack gives me the options here like for instance the pack of cigarettes there the little delorean you know the samsung phone and the you know all that kind of stuff also allows me the windshield sets to mount this this information display now that's up to you okay so how about wipers do we have indicators for the wiper lover let's see no actually i'm not see oh wait oh it's an old truck i see it's over here it's right here watch right here yep you see the knob turn the knob oh, right there, twists and turns. Okay, we do have wiper indicators. What about turn signal indicators? Okay, one thing about this truck, when we hit the turn signal, now this may be a flaw with the truck. The whole friggin' inside of the truck lights up. That's the right, here's the left. Yeah, you can see the whole inside of the truck lights up. Now, that doesn't bother me so much. One thing, I don't know yet, because I haven't driven this truck that much. Let's, okay, we have our parking brake on. We're just sitting here in neutral. Let's turn on our other lights. Do they flash inside the car? Okay. So, okay, so right there, okay, I have turned on my outside lights, nothing. You know I have all the br the blue and green outside. Um, let's turn on the headlights. Oh, looks good. Let's turn on the brights. You see that my brights flash up there, nothing. Now here's what I wanna know. Do my flashing hazard lights flash inside the cabin like my turn signals do? Remember my turn signals? Let's try the hazard lights. Nope, okay, that's good. That's actually really good to know. The hazard lights only flash inside the cab. I mean, the fly the, the hazard lights, because if you look outside my cabin, you can see I have lots of flashing lights. Hey, I like lots of lights in my truck. I like a little bit of chrome and lots of lights. It's good to know that stuff does not flash inside. Let's turn that back off now. But I bet you if I hit my hazards. Oh, sorry, wrong button. There we go. Yeah, as I figured. It flashes as if both turn signals. So it flashes the whole interior. That's cool. Let's look. I want to get out of this and go to. Let's have a look at the internals and like what kind of stuff you can modify in this. How you can make this your own truck. Let's go back to reverse. That would help. You can see here how I've set up the truck. I'm pretty sure it's acting like I have the parking brake on, but I'm almost. Yeah, I turned it off. All right, let's go back to the outside. Now, I'm playing this on PC with an Xbox controller. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can pull it turn. Now, this is a great little truck. Okay, let's, let's talk about the looks. Great little truck, just like the little Mac B series. It, okay, I'll tell you right now, there's a difference with this one and that one. This one actually comes with a realistic era, you know, underpowered engine. Unlike the Mac B, which I reviewed unfavorably because it, its engine was too powerful. This thing comes with, as far as I know, an aero realistic engine. Let's have a look at all the parts you can put on this, and we'll talk about that. All right, so here we are. Ooh, got quiet. Okay, so first let's have a look at the truck configurator. All right, cabs. You only have two cabs, and it's just a difference between if you want single headlamps or double headlamps. I wanted double headlamps. You only get the day cab on this one. Now let's look at the chassis. You get a few different chassis choices here, and yes, they do look different. If you click different ones, it's gonna affect the look of your truck. I personally like I like to keep a shorter wheelbase with big tanks, and you know, I want like a six by four configuration, so I use this right here with the 260 gallon tank. Now, okay, looking at the engines, this is not the in Oh, this is. This is the engine it comes with. Now, I may have more or less engines than you, depending on the mods you have downloaded, but this is the engine the truck comes with. 237 horsepower, 900 foot-pounds of torque. Doesn't sound like a lot. I don't know. We're going to try it on a haul, not a heavy haul. Definitely don't try this on a heavy haul, but we'll see how this works out. But you can see it comes with, as far as I know, a period-correct engine for this truck. Now, I, have, I do have mods installed if you look down here i have a c18 mod installed if i wanted to i could put a thousand horsepower engine in this but i'd rather have a realistic feel and sound of my truck so this is the engine it comes with right here we'll see how that works out transmission i have upgraded it does originally come with this top one here i believe a five-speed transmission again you may have different transmissions depending on mods i went ahead and put this 12 speed on it down here now let's have a look at the interior okay so you have two basic um, looks for the interior the all gray and black 
or the all brown. I chose the all gray and black is what I chose. Whoops, my panels changed there. That's because of, we'll get there in a minute. Actually, we'll just do that right now. If we go over to over here, it kind of erased some of my changes uh, right here, panels, and you can make them wood panels. So what I did was I chose a gray and black with wood panels. That was my personal choice. We'll talk about more personal choices in a minute. Paint jobs for this truck are easy to come across on the Steam Workshop. You can find paint jobs. I believe it also comes with a few. This is one of the ones I picked, this one right here, and then I customized it to red, white, and black. You can do whichever of these paint jobs you want. I think most of these come with it. I may have downloaded some as well, though. Again, check your Steam Workshop. All right, so we'll look through that, that, and that. Let's look at the parts we can modify in the truck, and then we're going to have a review after we drive it. All right, for the front grill, the grill, there's not many. We're going to start, we're just going to go uh, nose to tail. On the grill, really, all you can choose is chrome, painted frame, paint. I went with chrome on that. And then we have the banner down here, or the bumper, sorry, where's the banner thing? Oh, I guess it's not there. Okay. Or it is there, but it's behind something. Anywho. All right. So lamps, what's the choice between lamps? You can choose either a painted background or a chrome background. I chose the, the chrome background. For bumper, this is where you get, okay, so yeah, see right there? That's how I have so many lights on it. It comes with a lot of accessory slots possible, depending on what bumper that you choose for it. You see, you can choose any bumper to get any kind of look you wanted. I like the more kind of blinged out look. Now, I necessarily, I don't necessarily need all the lights I have. I just kind of, I want, I, I stocked mine fully with lights. So I thought I'd try it out. So there's many different choices you can pick there, either painted, chrome, or whatever. And I did choose to have a lot of lights. All right, now up here in the top of the cab, you have a horn slot and a light slot. I picked, uh, you can see it doesn't look like I have horns, I actually do, but I replaced them with beacons that came from a mod. And then we have the uh, cap and deflectors. There's only two choices, there's this choice, and I kind of like this choice up here. I'm just kind of running through this crap real fast for you guys. Right here on the sides, we have multiple options for the air filters. If you look on the side, you can have air filters only on one side or the other, because you have many selections, and you can choose the kind with the stack on it, and you can choose if you click up here, you can choose the type of inlet that it has on the top if you look up there. Now, I chose just to have the two um, air filters, just the two old school, what I consider when I see on trucks. You can go with whatever you want there. Now, here we have um, the straps and the tanks. So, I choose, I like crown. Um, no, actually, I chose, I'm sorry, I chose painted tanks personally with the chrome strappies. I thought that looked best with this truck. It's all up to you, all up to you. Here we can choose the exhaust. There's quite a few, quite a few options for the exhaust on this truck. I chose this one right here that I did because when you go to deck plate, I chose the logging rack and I think this exhaust looks best with the rack. Mud flap options, or I'm sorry, the uh, what are they mud guards, there we go. Several options you can choose from here. Um, because I have so little chrome in this truck, I thought it was nice to add a little chrome there. can also add, uh, let's see, mud flaps. I chose these particular mud flaps. There's several different options of your bumper. There's a lot of things you can do, but let's have a look at the inside. I know I have s skipped some stuff, but we're trying to move along. Let's have a look on the inside. Now, on the inside, a lot of this is available through the, there was the dashboard sets right here, which is going to come from Sizzle's Mega Pack. So you can put items all over your dashboard like this. That's a different mod pack, also available in the Steam Workshop. And everyone should know about that. If not, just go to uh, Steam Workshop. It's one of the top downloaded mods. Same thing with the windshield sets up here. That's how I have the little um, telepass devices and whatnot. Now, the main things I paid attention to, okay, this right here actually is part of the truck, the GPS. You can kill it. You can run this truck with no GPS. This is actually a truck option or you can turn it on, and it's actually a pretty good one. It's nice sized, it's not too bright, not too dim, it comes right there. I chose on the windshield sets right here to use the truck info as close to the GPS as I could and still out of the way so I could read the truck info. That was my own personal choice. Let's see what else you can do inside the truck because this is all kind of mod stuff. First of all, one thing about this truck, the Mac R series, the mirrors are kind of far back like the Mac B. You're gonna have to turn your head to really look at the mirrors. The front mirrors are a serious boon to this truck. Notice right here, I have both front mirrors in view, and you can see right past the air filters, these actually work really good. I do recommend the front mirrors. What else is there to do on the inside of this truck? I'm This is not my right steering wheel. I actually like this steering wheel. Personally, you can change the steering wheel, 
and you can add the little knobbies to it like this. I always like the compass one. This Again, uh, some of this stuff does come from other mods, but the steering wheel you should be able to modify within the truck. Also, gauges, you can choose to have them black trim or chrome, you know, bezel, whatever you want. I chose the black interior with the panel with the chrome bezel. Not a whole lot else you can do in here, but it's a pretty small cab. All right, guys, let's get out and drive this guy. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go on a delivery. Let's go ahead and we're going to leave and cancel all these changes because I like my truck just the way it was. Just close this out. All right, here we are back with my truck. Yep, everything's still set the way I had it. We're gonna go ahead and pick up a delivery and we're gonna run it. I'm, I'm gonna give you my opinion after after uh, a reasonable amount of miles. So after about 900 miles of driving the Mac R, and again, I'm glad I always put in the time, you know, because every truck is a bit rocky at the start as you get used to the controls and how you have your displays and such set up. So after about 900 miles, I feel I can give an honest opinion, both pros and cons. All right, so first off, unfortunately, this wasn't quite the truck I wanted it to be. I'll admit, here's how it was and how it wasn't the truck I wanted it to be. The Mac R is undeniably beautiful, and it has lots of bling options on it if you like that kind of thing, and that's good. It has great little knobbies and things in the dash to twist and flick, and you know, all, all that signify different things. I drove one truck the other day, for instance, which didn't even have an engine brake indicator. That was annoying. I could look at the knobs on my Mac R right here and point any, uh, you know, thing out. You know, I could tell what was going on with the truck, what was on, what was off. During the day, that is. And here's one of the small catches. At nighttime, it gets really dark and you pretty much lose all the dials. Except for the tack and the speedo, all the switches and knobbies in this truck get pretty dark until you become really, really sensitive to the darkness within the cab which I did, uh, driving this thing 800 miles, I drove it through a couple different day cycles. I did get used to seeing, I could tell at nighttime if the engine brake or if what position the um, other knobbies were in, but it, it, it's pretty dark. Now, uh, there was not a lot of backlighting on it. Hey, is that good or is that bad? That part's up to you. I did elect to put the GPS up and chose to put the info panel where I have it, right there above the truck where the truck puts its GPS. Although I feel this is one of the better GPS units in a truck, it is a bit too far to the right, I think. I found myself swerving, like when I first started driving the truck, to check the GPS, because it's so far off to the right, but I did get used to it, you know, where it was. Of course, I could have just turned the GPS unit off and used a different GPS added by a mod or something like that. Sure, you know, mods would allow you to put anything anywhere for instance the info panel was purely from a mod the info panel is not default from with the truck the info panel you see me using uh, does not come with the truck so you're gonna have to um and i like those but perhaps i just kind of like more modern trucks i lean towards more modern trucks so i drove it all night and day through a few cycles but never did get to try the wipers that i'll say but i did use them when, like when i first bought the truck it was raining and they do seem to clear the windshield pretty good now the truck's default engine is a bit underpowered as I figured, but it actually gave a great feeling under, well, under normal loads anyway. I would not recommend this for, you know, heavy pulling unless you have a bigger engine. Pulling a regular trailer, I was fine. Although some hills slowed me down a bit into like the 25 mile an hour range. Some of the bigger hills did kind of hold me back and it chugged fine in, in but, I should say, it chugged fine in the overdrive gears. Like, it really does, and I'll get to that in a second. Not that I was using the stock transmission. Oh yeah, there is that. I was not using a tr stock transmission, which is like a five speed. I was using a 12 speed transmission. So that's gonna kind of weigh into the thing here, even though I was using the stock regular you know, engine. I was using um, an aftermarket transmission. All right, so the truck does feel a bit light. Here's one thing, it feels a bit light and it's sometimes twitchy. And in the overdrive gears, for me, using a 12-speed transmission, like overdrive gears, which felt like about 11 and 12, especially going downhill, I felt like I had jerked the wheel too hard. It, you know, like had I jerked the wheel too hard, I could have flipped it. It got pretty twitchy. Flying downhill at 60 miles an hour um, in overdrive, it felt like it felt a little too flippy for 
as large a truck as it felt like, if that makes sense. Now, so back to the way it, it you know, the engine and stuff. Once it gets moving, it really moves. The Mac R really does move, and overall, it really does flow really well. You get the nice chug, 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 chug sound going up hills because it does. And that, I think, is important to immersion to a truck simulator. You want to feel like you're really, you don't want to just cruise over everything else. Just go play a racing game. You want to really um, have the challenge. With this one, once you get momentum, again, I was using an aftermarket transmission. Once you get momentum, you can really haul. And the engine brake is audible. That's one thing about this truck is, you know, while I was an American, I like my big loud stuff, right? So I want to hear good engine sound, a good engine brake sound. It's really audible. And at least with the transmission that I had equipped, it's also even audible under lowering the cruise control. Like say, for instance, I'm at 65 and I drop my cruise control down to 45. I can hear the engine going, you know, making that brrr sound, you know, downshifting. And I like that. It was kind of cool. I've, as far as audio goes, I've heard trucks that were better. But in short, it was easy to keep the Mac R at the proper speed most of the time, except for the climb up hills where sometimes I would drop down. So it drove very well. But I don't, you know, but why don't I like it as my favorite? Why isn't this truck my favorite? Well, me personally, I like my displays a little different and a little closer to my center of the truck. I could have maybe done some extra modding here. But there are trucks that do it better. The engine sounded good, but I know, you know, trucks that sound better. The cab roll going downhill at high speeds at times made me feel a bit uneasy. I think, again, because I accidentally did flip the last truck I was reviewing, but it was really lightweight. The Mac B61 was really light. I, I flipped that one because it got too wild going down the hills, but... Though this one got me a little nervous sometimes, I was going a bit fast, um, but the truck does in general feel right, it really does. The front mirrors work well, work well, and well, they need to because you can't see the side mirrors unless you look left or right. Um, also, the hood ornament on the truck, the, the little Mac hood ornament, works as a great frame of reference for positioning your truck on the road no matter what speed you're going. It really made it easy to know how wide I need, needed to turn and etc. Now, okay, so as far as the truck goes, um, as far as we're talking about positioning, etc., this particular wheelbase also worked well. The particular wheelbase I'm using, which is a longer chassis, uh, it wasn't the longest, it was like the medium one, I forget. You saw it earlier in the video. It worked well, and it also allowed me to back up the truck really easily and smoothly. I had no problem backing this truck up. Uh, wheelbase is going to affect that, you know. Shorter wheelbase the truck is more responsive longer wheelbase it's more smooth if this was a really nice medium i gotta say the truck layout this is the one of the best backing jobs i ever did back in this truck into the space at the end of the delivery at the end of the 900 miles i was able to pretty much just slide right in there it was as good as you know someone like me can i'm, I'm not a pro the mac r is a beautiful truck and I can't come close to addressing, you know, like all of its nuances here, and, you know, all its pluses and minuses. But as a more traditional American truck guy here, um, I'll take a newer model. You know, this one looks beautiful with its vintage look. But then why did I add so many digital displays as I did when clearly it, you know, it deserves a more simplistic look as, to, you know, opposed to a modern truck. So what I'm saying is I personally simply like, you know, a lot of the mini more you know mod cons of a, of a newer truck now definitely use the mac r for its vintage feel for sure it's the best one i've seen by far and you know as of yet but if you find yourself as i did you know outfitting it with more modern stuff just get a more modern truck is what i say just use a modern truck the mac r is a great truck but i do find others more immersive to be honest i do find other trucks more immersive my personal favorite truck is yet to come in a future review maybe the next one but i give the mac r a solid eight out eight out of ten given its vintage feel all the modifiable options and its smooth feel especially when cruising it cruises really well like maybe there were direct drive transmission options in there maybe one of them would have been given a better feel to be quite honest maybe i should have gone with the 12 speed maybe i should have gone with a direct drive transmission all right you can get this truck you know right from the steam workshop that's the other thing 
uh, this it's a mod of course this truck comes from a mod you can get it right from the steam workshop so you know it's reliable and good and everything there's paint jobs and stuff you know for it there and i do recommend giving it a shot as it's the best american vintage truck that i've driven in this game as of yet all right it really is i give it a solid eight out of ten but me myself i simply prefer modern trucks everyone has their preference all right guys thanks i'm dark deli and next time we'll be looking at okay we're gonna do it next time i have to I put so many thousands of miles on this truck. I got to review it next. Next, we're going to do my favorite truck. And we'll get to that next time. All right, guys. I will catch you guys later.